So maybe this one here will impress me. Goodness, that's juicy. Nice color on the inside there. I always like this end cap here. There's always some good flavor in that. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a wonderful day. It is Monday, July 10th here in South Georgia, and I'm about ready to call it a wrap on the 2023 tomato season. But I figured before we did, we'd have one more little mater soiree, do a little harvesting, talk about some of these varieties that we grew this year, talk about some plans going forward, and I especially wanna show you some of these Dixie Red tomatoes over in the raised bed plot. So we'll start out here with our two rows of determinate tomatoes. We've got our row of red snapper here, our row of roadster here, and as is usually the case down here in South Georgia come mid-July, these plants have about had it. Now we still got quite a few fruits in there that we need to harvest today, but these things are going downhill fast. Few plants over here that get a little more shade look better than the rest of them, but for the most part, they've seen better days. So I'm not usually one to milk a tomato plant for everything it's worth. If you are one of those people, enjoy your tomatoes, enjoy every last one of them. But usually when the plants start looking rough like this, this is when I'll kind of call it. There are still some green tomatoes on the very top of those determinate plants, kind of the last round of production. And I usually don't wait on all of those to enlarge and ripen. I find it more advantageous for me to get those rough looking plants out of the garden. We're not gonna pull them today, but we probably will pull them pretty soon. Now, when we harvested these two rows a few weeks ago, we noticed that the Roadster variety here was giving us more tomatoes. It had a little more early production on it, but the Red Snapper was giving us bigger tomatoes. So I'm gonna go through here and harvest both of these rows. We'll keep the variety separate, and we'll see if we can note any differences at this point, kind of late in the season. All right, so that's probably the biggest harvest we've gotten from those two rows this season. We're probably the last big harvest that we're gonna get. So in this bucket, we've got our roadsters overflowing that bucket, a nice harvest, especially considering what we've already gotten from that 30 foot row. And then over here, we have our red snappers. Now this time around, I can't tell any real noticeable differences in size. Maybe the red snappers are a little bit bigger than the roadsters, but they look pretty similar. Now we did get quite a few more red snapper tomatoes this time around than the roadsters but the roasters had been producing more up to this point so the roasters just an earlier variety we get more early the red snappers produce a little later and when they produce we get loads of them as you see here so the roadster and the red snapper are both awesome varieties i would recommend them to anybody and in my opinion these are some of the easiest tomatoes to grow especially if you want a lot of tomatoes at one time for canning purposes I would say by the time it's all over, we probably will have harvested around four or five gallon bucket fulls of tomatoes from each of those 30 foot rows or from 15 plants in each row. So not sure if I'll grow Roadster again next year. Don't really have a good reason for not growing it, except for that I may want to replace it with those Dixie Red tomatoes that I'll show you in a minute. But I'll definitely be growing Red Snapper again next year, just because I get so much good plant vigor out of it, good production and nice size fruits. So what are we gonna do with all these buckets and buckets of tomatoes? Well, to be honest with you, I'll probably give a vast majority of those away. I'll save some for sandwiches and making okra and tomatoes, but we've already done all the canning we're gonna do this year. So the way we usually do it is one year we'll make pasta sauce with all our tomatoes. The next year we'll make stewed tomatoes. This year was a stewed tomato year. Last year we made a ton of pasta sauce. Now we already had some stewed tomatoes left over from a previous year's canning. And a few days ago, Brooklyn put up, I think 20 or more jars of stewed tomatoes, which is enough for us to last a little while. So I don't really need to do any more canning. And so we'll just share these with somebody else who wants to do some canning. So we may get a few more tomatoes off these determinate plants, but I'm gonna take these down pretty soon. And when I do, I'll try to remember and show you all so I can show you just how easy it is to take down this Florida weave trellis. 
now let's check on a few of these last remaining surviving indeterminate plants so we've only got seven indeterminate plants left from the 30 or so that we started with these black beauty plants here they don't always look great every day but they're still putting on some fruits i figured it was too hot for them to set any new fruits you can see we've got some there now these things take forever to ripen i think we finally have some that are ripe here with a red bottom on them now i've heard pretty mixed reviews on this black beauty tomato variety i've heard some people say it's their favorite variety to grow every year i've heard a lot of other people say weren't that impressed with it i think it has something to do with the fact that a lot of people don't know including me when these things are actually ripe it's the only tomato i've ever seen that changes multiple colors or turns multiple colors as it ripens so most tomatoes start out green and then turn red or maybe orange or yellow this one starts out green with a little bit of a purple top then gets all the way black and then the bottom turns red so you got to wait on all these color changes to happen before it's nice and ripe so i've had a few of these black beauty tomatoes so far and they were just okay they weren't bad but i don't think i've had one this ripe yet so maybe this one here will impress me goodness that's juicy nice color on the inside there i always like this end cap here there's always some good flavor in that mm. there's nothing wrong with that that is really really good i don't see how anybody couldn't like that so that leads me to believe my theory might be right that people just don't know when to pick these things and then next to those delicious black beauty tomatoes if you pick them at the right time we've got this chocolate stripey plant here that is loaded up with some beautiful fruits i don't know if we'll get any more fruits off of it considering how hot it's gotten but these right here look ripe for the picking now what's interesting is the color on these doesn't look like the color you'll see online if you look up chocolate stripey uh, they're a lot darker some of the pictures i've seen and we grew a variety right over there called vintage wine and to me these look exactly the same as those vintage wine tomatoes so what you see in the pictures might not always be what you get now for this next plant here i don't remember what variety this is and the plant just looks okay doesn't look terrible i haven't cut it down yet but we're not getting any production from this plant so i about as well cut that one down behind that non-producing plant we've got one plant left from this amana variety which has been pretty decent for us compared to all the other ones we just had one plant that made it but these tomatoes right here are pretty dang delicious once you let them turn kind of all the way yellow or orange so still probably a few more days before i pluck those two there then we've got our big wisconsin tomato plant right here it's still hanging in there although i am starting to see a little leaf spot on it so it might not make it much longer got two really good looking fruits there waiting on those to turn a little bit i'm definitely going to save seeds from one of those and the other one will go in my belly and then we have our lone turkey creek plant here still hanging in there pretty well looks like the wind broke off a branch this morning getting some flowers up top there who knows if those will actually turn into fruits and speaking of in my belly this is one that i want to get in my belly but i can't now i've eaten several of these over the last week and they were just as delicious as i remember them being last year but considering the fact that this is the last one i may get i think i need to reserve this one for a little seed save now if you've been following the channel a while you know i'm not a big seed saver just not one of those hobbies i really get into but since i like this variety so much i think i will try saving some seeds from this and over time seeing if we can acclimate a particular strain of this to our hot and humid climate down here now from what i remember from my genetics classes way back in the day it takes about six generations to do that so this is going to be a very very slow process i know mike in kentucky where we got these seeds originally is growing out some more seeds we should have them on our website next year but i'm gonna have my own little strain that i'm trying to locally acclimate here and the reason i want to do that is just because i like this indeterminate variety so much i really like the flavor on it but i also like 
the uniformity of the fruit. A lot of those heirlooms are all bumpy and gnarly and they're kind of really hard to slice. You just end up with big lumps of tomato pieces. It's hard to get a nice consistent slice on them. But these are really easy to slice. They're really big, really tasty. So I'm gonna see what I can do as far as saving the seeds from this and replanting it next year. So now let's dig off over there to the raised bed plot and let me show you these Dixie Red Determinant Tomatoes. Now these three plants here don't look spectacular. Part of that is my fault because I was several weeks late getting these planted. Part of it's the wind's fault. It's blown down these cages several times and I've stood them back up. But I want you to look at those fruits right there. Those are some of the most beautiful fruits I have ever seen on a tomato plant. And we finally got some in here that are getting ripe. So let me grab what I can find here. We'll lay them out on the back of the buggy and take a closer look. So check out the size on those right there. Those are some nice looking units. We've got one over here. The top of it's getting worked on pretty good. The bottom still looks okay. We may use that one for a taste test here in a minute. But I'm just impressed with the size of the fruit, how good the fruit looks here. Obviously some of these are gonna to need to ripen on the counter a little bit, but I would say that rivals the red snapper as far as top end size. Now if I hold them in my hand here, you can see a little bit better just how big they are. Those are two of the nicer looking ones of the ones I just picked. That one right there ain't far from being ready to go on a sandwich. And here's that one that done got all boogered up, but the bottom still looks kind of okay. We'll see if we can get us a little slice here off the bottom and give this one a try. There's the inside, kind of pink on the inside. It's a good tomato, nothing wrong with that. Good, good sandwich tomato. Now it doesn't taste as good as that Black Beauty we had earlier, but we knew that that wasn't going to be the case. We know some of those heirlooms are always going to have a little more flavor than these, but I think this will make a great canning tomato. Now I haven't made up my mind completely, but I'm leaning towards replacing my 30 foot row of roaster next year with a 30 foot row of these Dixie Red tomatoes. Just going to give them a try. If we don't like them, we can always go back to Roadster or another variety the following year. I've also found a couple yellow or orange determinant varieties online that I really want to try next year. Probably going to grow not near as many indeterminates next year and stick more with the determinants because that's what works for us. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to check out our affiliate links and coupon codes in the description below and go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com. And if you wanna see how we did that Florida weave trellis for those determinate tomatoes, check out this video right here. We'll break it down all what you need to support those short, bushy, dense, heavy, whatever you wanna call them, determinate tomato plants. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.